Well, hello and welcome back. If you are new here, um, last month, April, I did a plein air every day for the month of April. And today I am going to go over what I used for my plein April challenge. We are going to start with my sketchbook. This sketchbook I got, um, it was, it was pretty cheap and it felt really cheap. So the sketchbook I got, this, this is a label. It is by Master's Touch Fine Art Studio, produced by Hobby Lobby. It is their watercolor, 48 pages, 8 by 5 inch sketchbook. Um, at the time, I got it for $8.99. So, pretty good deal, but you really pay for what you get. I noticed once I opened the book along here, the spine, it, it kind of broke and stuff, but since the pages are sewn together, they didn't fall apart. You can really tell, like right here is like, you can really see the binding on the inside. And the paper, one side of the paper, the side that has the stitches like here, um, it was decent, but the back side of the paper, like the side where you can totally see where it broke open on the binding with the glue and stuff, um, it was kind of pilly. It wasn't the best quality. So if you're just playing around and don't care about the quality of your paper and care more about your budget, then, you know, this might work for you. And it, it worked for me pretty well for the challenge, actually. Um, next up is I want to talk about my paints. This palette came in this box. I bought it for $20 at my local art store, which is the art department in downtown Salem. So I got this little palette. It comes empty. You put your own paints in these little half pans. Turn it around. This is how I saw my palette during the entire challenge. I arrange the paints, not too much by color, but by brand. So this side, my right side is all by M. Graham and the left side is all by Schminka. Here is my bag of gouache. Let's open it up and look at all the colors. We're going to start with the Schminka brand. So the top left up here was, ah, here it is. It was the Helio Turquoise. Sometimes I call it Helio Blue, but it it's Helio, Helio Turquoise. I, I kind of forgot the name after a little bit. So here it is, top left. And then this one here was the Delft Blue kind of like a dark blue. And the next one down was the Burnt Sienna. Classic color for my palette. I usually go for a, a yellow ochre, but this titanium gold ochre, uh, I grew to really like it. That was here in the palette. And then now we have our lemon yellow. I would say this is kind of a cooler color for a yellow, but it still worked pretty well in the palette. Uh, you can tell I use this color quite a bit. This is the titanium white. It's pretty much empty. And then on this side over here, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. This is all by M. Graham. The bottom right color is the ivory black. And then I used a Payne's gray. I also used a cobalt blue.
my primary red was a pyrrole red. I used the Azo or Azo yellow for my primary yellow for M. Graham. And I played around with a zinc white. You'll see an extra tube of gouache. I haven't used this one yet. This is a Hansa Yellow by M. Graham. Um, I actually bought enough paint the last time I was at the art department and got a free tube of gouache. So this little guy, I'll use at a later time. I picked up the spray bottle from the art department. It has a really nice fine mist, and so I used this to spritz water on my palette before I started painting and throughout my painting session as needed to refreshen the paints. I also used this to add water to my little containers. These guys are actually made for like oil painting, I believe, but they work really well for plein air painting. I like to have two containers of water, one to rinse my dirty brush in and one to get clean water out of. So this worked perfect for me. And it has this fantastic clip that you can clip to things. And they're metal, so if you had magnets, it could work as well too. The inside of the lids, have this rubber so I can use these once I get my dirty water in them I can close them up and they'll be sealed and safe in my bag for when I get home to dispose of my dirty water and part of the time when I was painting in my car I use this old peanut butter jar A couple of miscellaneous items I like to keep in this bag. I got this bag from the Mary Artist. And, oh, yes, I also got these guys from the Mary Artist. It's an art store in McMinnville, Oregon. I really utilize paper towels quite a bit, and I reuse them over and over again as needed. Here are some of my clips that I used to help open up my um, sketchbook and to keep my little um, plein air setup attached to my sketchbook. And then I sketched mostly with Prismacolor Verifin. I have the goldenrod and terracotta, and I also use just a normal graphite pencil. This is a 3H and a 4B. I forget which one I, I used, but I keep these in my little bag. And then just, just a pencil sharpener. You never know when you need it. I also keep some washi tape in my bag. You never know when you might need it. I use it for some of the borders in some of my earlier paintings. I also have a white Verifin by Prismacolor um, pencil. I have a Jelly Roll 08 Sakura um, gel pen. I kind of played around with these two on the day I did the corn crib. I never use this, but it's just a ballpoint pen. You never know when you might want to use it. This guy is just some chapstick. <laughs> I didn't really use it much, but it's helpful to have. I also have a kneaded eraser. It gets kind of all chunky and stuff from whatever's in my bag, but it can come in handy. And now it's time to get to the paintbrushes. So these paintbrushes come in a set of three in this cute little bag little pouch and they come in three different sizes this is the size 12 the biggest size and then we have a size 8 which is a medium size 
And then the, the small size, which is a size four, this one doesn't stay in very well. So these are the main paintbrushes I use for my plein air challenge. They are all rounds and round brushes are actually my favorite kind of brush to paint with. But I also painted with this quarter inch Princeton Neptune dagger. It's called a dagger by the shape. And I have like a wide stroke, but you can also get to a nice fine point. I also utilized my new set of brushes. I just got these at the beginning of the year. These are by Sarah Burns Studio in collaboration with Craftemote. So she designed these brushes with the company Craftemote and then um, they sold them as a, a set of seven brushes. And these are specifically designed to work with gouache. Uh, these were a lot of fun to use. I don't use flats very often, but it helped me figure things out and try something new. And one of the last things I want to talk about is what I use to film all my videos. This is a Canon EOS M50. Great little compact camera that I used. And then I use a Rode mic to attach to the hot shoe and it just plugs into the little microphone port. And I just use the 15 to 45 lens that came with it. It's called a kit lens. It comes as a little kit. It is removable. So I can put a different lens like a telephoto lens or even a different brand on it if I want to later. So this is just a nice little camera to use and the screen does come out and it will swivel and then I have a little tripod plate and I'll grab my tripod and this is the tripod that I used I started using it halfway through the challenge because my previous tripod which was a very cheap one um, that I was using, um, it broke. <laughs> so this guy really came in clutch. I got this used from a local camera shop called Focal Point Photography in Dallas, Oregon. So this is everything I use for my Plain April Challenge. My gouache, I let the paints dry it out. You can see they're pretty dried out. And I spritz them with water. I refill the paints and clean them out as needed. Um, sometimes I cleaned out the little mixing areas. Other times I just kept working with the colors that were already there. And oh yes, I want to show you. I bet a lot of you are dying to know what I attached my palettes, my water cups, and my paper towels to. It is... Let's take this apart. I use rubber bands to hold on my palette. This is two pieces of matte board that I cut out. And then it's shiny because I applied some vinyl to help keep it water resistant. This is the back side. You can see how I cut the vinyl to come around everything. I didn't put extra vinyl on this backside. That's why it's all matte and then the edges are shiny. But this hole here, what you do is this fits in here like that. And then you can clip here and over here to your sketchbook and then have open the pages that you want. And I already had my paint, my palette on here and my cups and a little rubber band for my paper towels. And this is how I paint one handed. The most last thing I'm going to talk about today is can you see the shine on the page? Compared to this page, there's no shine. 
it's because I'm working on coating these pages with Dorland's wax medium. Because if I were to drop water on this, it would instantly reactivate the gouache and leave a watermark. So like this page, the shine is from the wax medium and that builds a protective layer even within a sketchbook for your paintings. So this is what I've been using. I just use, um, you can just use a lint free cloth or even a little paper towel if you're really careful to apply it to the painted surface. And then you let it dry and you can buff it and even shine it. So this is everything that I use for my Plen April challenge. If you haven't seen the videos, I encourage you to go back and watch them. If you have seen the videos, I would love for you to leave a comment of which of the 30 paintings is your favorite and why? Is it because of the environment I was working in? Was it the subject matter? Was it something I talked about, like a little hint or tip I gave? Let me know which video is your favorite and why. Thank you so much for coming along and checking out what I used for my Plen April challenge where I paint every day in the month of April with gouache in one sketchbook. Up next will be a <gasps> sketchbook tour of all the paintings in here. So we get to do a little recap of every painting. I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you are too. And I hope this has inspired you along your painting journey. And I will see you in the next video. Let's do a screen grab for the screen grab for the thingy. Yes.